Today's talking points are mostly going to be inspired by questions I've gotten either on Instagram or in the YouTube comments section. How do you transport wet canvases? I get this question all the time. A lot of you know this. I use wet panel carriers. So when I'm doing plein air painting, obviously you've got a wet panel, you've got to bring it uh, home. So you can buy these. This one I think I got at Utrecht in San Francisco or Blick. Um, and they're not cheap. I think this was about $20, just made out of plastic, but it allows you to carry up to four, uh, four wet panels, put it in your backpack, off you go, and you have them in different sizes for different panels. Uh, Raymar online is a good place um, for wet panel carriers. Okay, uh, let's see, do I teach? Um, I've been asked to teach workshops and that sort of thing, and so far I've only done one. It was like a one-day cityscape um, workshop, and it was fun but exhausting. But no, I'm not really currently teaching. I am just, I've kind of gone this route here where I'm, you know, sort of putting all the information out on YouTube. Um, and that takes a lot of time and energy, and so I am not teaching. Um, if at some point things slow down with like a, uh, who knows. But for now, I'm going to put all the information on YouTube, and, uh, and I'm not going to be doing much teaching in the real world so um, but that could change at some point uh, let's see what inspires you to paint I'm inspired by so many things but mainly light light is the thing that inspires me the most to keep it simple uh, how do you clean your brushes when changing to different colors so yeah a lot of painters have problems keeping their color clean and I think that's something that really happens when you start out is your you get a lot of muddy colors, you know, it, you're, uh, especially if you're trying to put color on top of other color, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute too. Uh, but in order to keep your brush clean, what I do, because I tend to use one brush for a whole painting, is I just use a brush cleaner. The first brush cleaner I had, I made myself, which I just took a can and then a smaller can. This was like a little short can that I think had chopped um, jalapeno peppers in it. And I just punched holes in it with a nail, and that makes like a grating so that when you uh, when you swish your brush around inside of the can in the mineral spirits, you're not down in the bottom in the muck in the sediment. Um, this is like a nice grating for you to you know swish your brush around to clean it up. Um, and then yeah, this just goes in here, and then you put mineral spirits and got a brush washer. So I constantly wash my brush especially well mostly when I'm changing colors but that's how I do it uh, and there are also commercially available brush washers um, like ones that have sealable lids so if you're out plein air painting you can just you know seal it up and off you go and so that's how I clean my brushes and then I might as well talk about keeping clean color or painting over wet paint. This is like one of the most common questions is like, how do you paint over other paint? In other words, when you're doing wet on wet or al prima painting, which is typically what plein air painters do, or it's what I do in the studio as well. I like to go at a painting and finish it in one session if possible. So being that oil paint dries slowly, you're gonna be painting over wet paint. The only thing I can say is keep those first layers thin thin layers first and then come over with thick paint and the other thing that i've noticed that beginners struggle with is they do not use enough paint so in other words if you've got a thin layer of paint on your panel or your canvas and then you you load your brush with like some skimpy amount of paint and then you try to lay the paint over it it's not going to work you need to have enough paint on your brush for the subsequent layers. You're going to need to have enough brush uh, paint on your brush to kind of just gently glide it over the painting and then have that paint go on there. So you need to load your brush when you're coming over the thin layers. So I'd say that um, that is something that I I don't know. It takes a while before you feel comfortable. Um, like those those. Um, the recent, uh, what is it, the recent paintings I've been doing, the little 8x8 eight eight paintings, 
the amount of paint I go through in an 8x8 painting, especially white, a lot of white paint or whatever, or an ultramarine too, uh, I go through a lot of paint in that small painting just because of loading the brush up and putting down a stroke. Load up the brush, put down a stroke. That's another way to get clean color. You don't want to just be kind of going over and over or licking as they call it. You don't want to do that. You want to you know, put down a stroke and leave it. So that's how you get clean color and that's how you will lay, um, you know, you'll put color on top of color. All right, what else do we have here? Um, oh, do you always use the same palette of colors? Or do you like see a scene and then specifically, and then pick out colors for that scene? Uh, I do start with the same, uh, like I have a basic core palette, um, which I use all the time. I, I won't say like on any given painting there's, you know, that I use every single color on the palette, but I have like maybe six colors that are core colors, maybe seven. And, um, and then I will add certain colors, uh, if they're needed. Like, like I have uh, cadmium red light is, is part of my, I have, you know, that is part of my paints, but I don't put it out all the time. I don't use it all the time. Uh, what's another one I don't use all the time? Like say if I was going to use something like a Viridian, like a green, an aqua green color uh, that I can't reach f using phthalo blue, um, then I would reach for something like a Viridian or a phthalo green even. Uh, or sometimes another color that I use is dioxazine purple. I don't usually have that on my palette, but I have a tube of it in case I need a really pure saturated purple. Uh, especially if I want to light, lighten the value. A little bit of dioxazine mixed in with white and you get a very strong purple color, a lighter valued purple color um, that I can't quite get with ultramarine and alizarin crimson because that's kind of a, you start lightening that up and it doesn't have the punch that's necessary sometimes. So the bottom line is, and what is my core palette? It would be alizarin crimson, um, burnt sienna, uh, cadmium yellow medium, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue. Those are my, those are my core paint, uh, paints that I use. And then also I have uh, yellow ochre when I'm doing landscapes is a really handy color. And then like I said, dioxazine purple and cadmium red light. Those are also really useful. Um, and that's about it. Oh, and then also like sometimes viridian. But that's about it. So yeah, I have a core palette and then I just add to it when necessary. But still, even with the added colors, it's not many. I like to use fewer colors. Some people like to have greens, like I have no greens on my palette. I did for a while there, I was using, I think I was experimenting with sap green, but I think greens are much better when you mix them yourself. So I always mix all my greens um, using, you know, blue and yellow. Uh, actually, sometimes, Burnt Sienna actually will make a green too if you use it with, if you use it with say like phthalo blue. What's a good brush for a beginner? Uh, this is a Utrecht 209 flat. It's a natural bristle, inexpensive brush. Um, and yeah, I would say like natural bristle flats in sizes like four, like four, six, eight, ten. That's probably a good range. Uh, you can get a lot of painting done with those and that's what I started with and I think flats are really good. Natural bristle, you do get a certain kind of effect with the natural bristle that I like. It's kind of, um, I find like I can put down thicker paint and um, thicker paint and then also the texture of the paint that's applied, it, it's, it's nice. It kind of has a nice look to it. However, there are times when I don't get the control that I want out of a, a flat, so I will pick up a bright and I use synthetic brights. Uh, they're more precision, so like a lot of the little cityscapes I do, those are done exclusively with brights. Actually, some of the, um, I've used brights also on some of the still lifes as well. So uh, it could be good to have a combination of brights and flats. Um, and I find that the brights I like synthetic, they're more precision, uh, they last longer too, but they are more expensive. Um, but the key thing about um, that you might want to practice on some of these smaller panels is just taking the brush, loading it, and, and putting one stroke down. Um, that's something that I think is really helpful and you'll grow a lot as a painter. 
I just, I just put a video on my Patreon talking about some discoveries I've made about selling online and things that I think really help to sell online. Uh, and I won't go into that. That video is on my Patreon link down below. But one thing I will say is that that visible brush strokes are something that I think people really do respond to. And so if you're kind of brushing out your strokes to smooth everything, um, you're going to defeat that. You're going to destroy all the brush work by going over the same passage over and over again. So by loading the brush, putting down that brush stroke, leaving it, load the brush again and keep doing that repeatedly until you've got your painting more or less finished. Um, that's uh, a way to preserve those brush strokes. And like I said, people do respond to that. Let me know if you got more questions. I'd be happy to answer them. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to do another demo, another still life demo, because I'm kind of having fun with these. Um, so I'm going to film that today. That should be up in a few days. Uh, thanks for hanging out, guys. Hope you're staying creative out there. And I will see you in the next video.